Shalom, welcome to another edition of Great Millstone Mailbag Extra, coming to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Barshem Yahushai Barshem Rakakwadash. All praises and glories due here for another edition of the Daily Edification. Now in this video, I'm going to talk about humility and use an example with uh, Knut the Great. And um, I've done uh, videos on this topic before. You know, I find uh, King Canute, who actually did li live to be a very interesting figure, especially of uh, what he did to show his uh, humility. And every now and then, us brothers in the truth, it's good to check, you know, our our pride and to uh, incorporate, which incorporate literally means in the body. To incorporate humility, to to incorporate being humble, and uh, this is a good tale that shows this. And I'm just going to get right into it, in hopes of uh, conveying that uh, message. You know, in the ancient time, uh, before you had uh, <laughs> television and all these forms of entertainment, a, a form of entertainment back then was to tell stories. Some of them were true. You know, and some of them were fairy tales. They were legends. But uh, usually out of that story, there was a moral that could be uh, learned. Okay, there was some lesson that could be learned out of the story. Okay, and uh, this is one of those uh, stories. Now, this happens to be a true story of uh, King Canute. Let's just check the the facts on King Canute, you know, he was born in 990 uh, AD in Denmark. Now, Denmark means mark of the judges. And at one time, so-called Negroes, so-called black men actually lived in Denmark. Okay, we, we lived all up in that area, especially around nine, 990 AD, which would put us uh, right in the so-called period of the Dark Ages. Okay, that's what the Edomite scholars call it, the Dark Ages or the Middle Ages. But um, as you can see here, according to uh, the source that's here, and I believe that's Wikipedia, he was born in 990 AD and he was a Jake. He didn't look like this. This is nothing but uh, Renaissance art. Uh, his father was Swain uh, Forkbeard, Swain Forkbeard. And um, over here it says his mother was unknown. It shows you back then it was, you were more known by who your father was. Your father carried the legacy, your father carried the carried the um, the lineage okay we don't even know well according to this we don't even know who his mother was but we know his father was Swain Forkbeard all right so like I said he was a king that actually lived he, he lived and he ruled over England he was also king of Denmark and um, let's get to the tale now what I did was I typed in King Canute Inspirational Tales because when I first did the video on him that's the site I used it was called uh, Inspirational Tales it was a site that told of tales that inspired you and this one is definitely inspirational it inspires us to be humble by the time I'm finished reading the story of, of uh, King Canute and his humility you will see the the um the great example of being humble and and that's what he was known for uh, uh, King Canute anyway um so what I did was I, I uh, typed in this on Google and this well a bunch of sites came up now this was the site I was looking for but as you can see the story is not loading up so I was kind of upset about that because that's the site that I used the last time so what I did was I uh, scrolled down and I found a site that's equally as good 
and see if I find it. Yeah, this this is the one that I found, and I'll use this one for this lesson here from the website storiesforpreaching.com. Uh, King Canute. It says King Canute was once ruler of England. The members of his court were continually full of flattery, and that's one of the things we have to guard against being in this truth, especially when you're in a high position. You know, they will have guys that will come to you for a lot of flattery, and that you have to be uh, you have to be vigilant against flattery, as it is written in Ephesians 5 and 15. See that ye, as a matter of fact, let me get that. One of the things we have to guard against is flattery. And if the Holy Spirit is working with you, it'll, it'll alert you to flattery. You know, it'll, it will alert you to a, a brother with a sincere comment. There are brothers out there that give a sincere comment from, from the heart, so to speak. But there are guys out there that will just flatter you. Okay? Some of them for... Uh, a wicked end they'll flatter you to to when they feel they've gotten over on you they'll just try to destroy you okay so anyway here, here it is ephesians 5 and 15 see that ye walk because we're all walking in this faith right this is a path of truth right we're walking the path of truth right being in this knowledge right see that ye walk circumspectly which means to look around check everything out you know check one's uh, sincerity if is the comment sincere or is this guy full of flattery? You know, and if he's full of flattery, then you already mark him. So, okay, this this is a guy here that's full of flattery. I got to watch this guy. Why is he flattering me? Is he flattering me to destroy me? Or is he is he really flattering me to to um, boost my ego? What, what, what is his, what is his, uh, his uh, aim? You know, what is his goal? Anyway, see that he walks circumspec circumspectly. Not as fools, but as wise, okay? Redeeming the time because the days are evil. And what I'm about to read about King Canute shows that he was wise. Because he checked those guys on their flattery. And he did it in a, a dramatic way. Anyway, let's get into the story. The members of his court were continually full of flattery. You are the greatest man that ever lived. <laughs> you are the most powerful king of all, your highness. There is nothing you cannot do. <laughs> nothing in this world dares to disobey you. I mean, that's <laughs> you actually got people like that, man. All right. <laughs> that's some extreme form of flattery. Reading on, it says the king was a wise man. See, part of being wise, brothers, is to walk circumspectly. Not as a fool, but wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeeming the time means judging the time. So we have to guard against flattery. We'll have a lot of, especially as we get more and more popular, we get more and more famous. Here comes the flattery. Okay? And that's why being a celebrity is not all what it's cracked up to be. Because most celebrities are built, built up on flattery. Okay? Most celebrities are built up on flattery. Anyway, uh, Let's read it again. The king was a wise man, and he grew tired such foolish speeches. The king was a wise man, and he grew tired such foolish speeches. should say he grew tired of such foolish speeches. One day, as he was walking by the seashore, Canute decided to teach them a lesson. So he was, Canute was very vigilant of their... Uh, flattery okay uh reading on it says so you say i am the greatest man in the world he asked he asked them O king they cried there was there never has been anyone as mighty as you and there never be anyone so great ever again <laughs> wow and you say all things obey me canute asked yes sire they say or oh, they said, the world bows before you and gives you honor. Now, this actually happened, okay? <laughs> I see, the king answered. In that case, bring me my chair and place it down by the water. The servant scrambled <laughs> to carry Canute's royal chair 
over the sands. Now, in the other story, um, Inspirational Tales, which is the one I was trying to get, it said that some of when... Uh, well, let me see if... Uh, when King Canute gave the gave the order to get the get his chair his royal chair and to place it by the sand they was looking at Canute like he was going crazy like he was suddenly struck with mental in, uh mental in, illness <laughs> in the other in the other tale you know the inspirational tales that's the one i really wanted to get but anyway let's read on it says the servant scrambled to carry Canute's royal chair over the sands at his direction they placed it right at the water's edge the king sat down and looked out at the ocean. Right now, in the other story, they said, or it said, that uh, the, um, you know, his servants was looking at him like he was going mad. Okay, it was the other story was more dramatical. Anyway, the king sat down and looked out at the ocean. I noticed the tide is coming in. Do you think it will stop if I gave the command? Give the order. <laughs> O oh, great king, and it will obey, cried his entourage. See, cried Canute, I command you to come no further. Do not dare touch my feet. He waited a moment, and a wave rushed up the sand and lapped at his feet. <laughs> How dare you, Canute shouted. Ocean, turn back now. I have ordered you to retreat before me, and now you must obey. Go back. In came another wave lapping at the king's feet. Canute remained on his throne throughout the day, screaming at the waves to stop. <laughs> wow. Yet in they came uh, anyway, until the seat of the throne was covered with water. So the more he commanded the waves to stop, the more they increased to the point where they covered his chair in water okay and he was all wet and according to this account it said that he stayed there all day or throughout the day doing that so he wanted to really teach his uh mind you Canute wasn't crazy he wasn't losing his mind he just wanted to teach his uh, uh, entourage, like the like the story said, he wanted to teach them a lesson, a very valuable lesson, and to stop with all that flattery. Because I know, well, according to the story, it said he was getting tired of the flattery, and he wanted it to stop. So he had to be very dramatic in his lesson. Okay, again, Canute remained on his throne throughout the day, screaming at the waves to stop. Yet in they came anyway, until the seat of the throne was covered with water. Finally, Canute turned to his entourage when he, when he felt that they had learned their lesson. And you know they were just looking at him, and uh, they are probably saying, yeah, this guy is mad, he's mad. Knowing that all along, it's their flattery that drove him to do what he had to do, to teach them that lesson. Finally, Canute turned to his entourage and said, it seems I do not have quite so much power as you would have me believe. Perhaps now you will remember there is only one king who is all-powerful. And that shows you right there that he was a Jake. Because Esau don't believe in the Heavenly Father. Okay, That right there is a clue that Canute was a Jake. Because Esau don't believe in the Heavenly Father. He don't believe that the Heavenly Father is the one true power. Because he's the wicked. Let's get Psalms 36. Prove that real quick. It is right here. Actually, Psalms 36 and 1. A Psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, which David himself was a king. And he was a Jake, so-called black man, so-called Negro. A psalm of David, the servant of the Lord. The transgression of the wicked. Who's the wicked? Esau, Edom, Malachi 1 and 4. The transgression of the wicked, meaning what makes them go off. Transgression is sin. Okay, First John 3 and 4. The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart, 
that there is no fear of the Most High before his eyes. And that's Esau, Edom. They don't fear the Heavenly Father. Now this man, Canute, feared the Heavenly Father. That's why he's about to make the statement, which that's a clue that proves that he was a Jake. Okay. Finally, Canute turned to his entourage and said, It seems I do not have quite so much power as you would have me believe. Perhaps now you will remember there is only one king who is all-powerful. That's the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Even Yahweh Shai said that. He, he spoke about the great power of his father, Yahweh, who is all-powerful, and it, and it is he who rules the sea and holds the ocean in the hollow of his hand. I suggest you reserve your praises for him. That was beautiful. I mean, that, that story, every time I read it, it, man, it, inspire, it inspires me, okay? And what is the main moral that we can get out of that story? Brothers, humility, to be humble. No matter how great, and King Knut was a great man, but no matter how great we get, we always have to remember that there's one that is all-powerful, and that's the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai. And, and Yahweh has given his, his son, all power, which now is Yahweh Shai. Okay, let's prove that. Yahweh Shai said it, all power, because Yahweh Shai proved his humility when he went on the cross. I mean, that was a, a great thing that he did, man, going on the cross and, and dying like that. All power. It is right here, the book of Matthew 28 and 18, something Yahweh Shai said. And Yahweh Shai came and spake unto them, saying, All power to them is his disciples, which became apostles. And we believe by faith that we're of that group, you know, the, uh, Yahweh Shai's disciples, which numbers about 144,000. Okay? Uh, Yahweh Shai came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So th there you go. And that power was given to him by his father. So there you have the tale of uh, King Canute. And what does it teach? It teaches humility or being humble, having a humble mind, no matter how great we get. Now let's get to the scriptures. The book of Romans 12 and 3. For I say through the grace given unto me, and that's what's given unto us, grace. You know, the Apostle Paul said, uh, through the Lord's grace, I am what I am. So we are what we are by the Lord's grace. So it's not for us to boast and brag and and to carry on as if there is no other power greater than us. For I say, though, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. And that's what Canute demonstrated. And that's why he was so dramatic in teaching his... Uh, his uh, entourage, like the story said, his entourage such a great lesson about humility because they kept flattering him. And some maybe some might have been flattering him sincerely, but mo I believe the, mo the majority of them were just <laughs> flattering the man because of his position, of his power. He was king. Okay, so we have to guard against that, brothers. Uh, for I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as the Most High have dealt to every man the measure of faith. And boy, did King Canute demonstrate uh, an example of thinking soberly. Remember, the story said that he was a wise man, and he didn't, he didn't buy into that flattery that his entourage was giving him. Okay. All right, the next scripture is the book of Sirach, also known as Ecclesiastic, Ecclesiasticus 3. And um, let me start at 17. It says, My son, go on with thy business in meekness. Now business is what? Teaching this word. And we teach it with a, a meek a meek and humble spirit. Okay, we don't go out there like we're, like, like we're gangsters. How should I say that I've sent you as sheep among wolves? You look at the nature of a sheep. Sheep looks humble in comparison to a wolf. But the, the time is going to come when the Lord is going to turn that sheep into lion or into lions. Okay? Yahweh Shai came as a sheep. Now, when he comes back, he's coming back as a lion. Okay? As this great power. 
All right, so that's the balance. As it is written, a false balance is an abomination in the sight of the Lord. But for right now, it's time for us to be that sheep, you know, among wolves. But we're going to get that power, man. You know, pursuant to Jeremiah 16 and 16, the Lord said he sent for many fishermen. And then the fishermen shall turn into what? Into hunters. What does a lion do? A lion hunts. So anyway, the greater thou art, the more humble thyself. And thou shalt find favor before the Lord. The Lord loves humility. Many are in high place and of renown. But mysteries are revealed unto the meek. So let's never forget that, brothers. Mysteries are revealed unto the meek. The low guy, the little guy. For the power of the Lord is great, and he is honored of the lowly. So there you go. And now finally, what I did was I typed in humble in the blue letter, and a bunch of scriptures came up. First is Job 22 and, uh, 29, when men are cast down, then thou shalt say, there is lifting up, and he shall save the humble person. Um... Psalm 10 and 12, Arise, O Lord, O power, lift up thine hand, thine hand, forget not the humble. Proverbs 16 and 19, Better is it to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Proverbs 29 and 23, A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Matthew 18 and 4 is something Yahweh Shai said to his disciples when they were arguing between themselves which one is the greatest, which disciple was the greatest. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And that's how Yahweh Shai, that's how he checked their, uh, their anger that they had between them, the, you know, his disciples when they were arguing be between themselves who was the greatest disciple. Uh, Matthew 23 and 12, And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, mean brought low. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. And that's one of the reasons why we remember King Canute today, to this very day. Because of his humility, his demonstration of humility, that great act that he did. And you know that's uh, not Esau. You know King Canute wasn't Esau because Esau is not humble. Esau is proud. Tells you in the book of Obadiah, the first chapter, the pride of Esau. He's, re he's renowned for his pride. So there's nothing humble about Esau. Uh, James 4 and 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. 1 Peter 5 and 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. Meaning, look out for each other. And be clothed with humility. <laughs> Remember the the example of King Canute, okay? The great example that he did. And be clothed with humility, for the Most High resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. There you go. Perfect scripture. Beautiful scripture. First uh, Peter 5 and 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of the Heavenly Father, that he may exalt you in due time. So eventually we will be exalted. But right now it's a time of being humble, especially, especially among the brotherhood. All right, so I believe that's it, brothers. That's all I have. This has been uh, GMS Mailbag Extra for another edition of the Daily Edification. Uh, the lesson today was to be humble, to show humility. You know, there are times when we have to show humility being in this knowledge, being in this faith. And remember the example of uh, King Canute and God against flattery. Especially you camp leaders because you have a little power, a little posi uh, position. You will, you will come ag across flattery. And, uh, you know, you have to have the vigilance and the mental acuity to guard against it. All right, so that's the message for today. So I'll see you in the next video. Shalom for now.